everyone. This is Laura Jane, and what's happening, San Diego? We are recording in Thomas Hearsley's Thunderbird Analog Recording Studio right here in beautiful South Oceanside. And today's guest is a North County guy himself, Nathan James of Nathan James and the Rhythm Scratchers. And we're going to talk to him, but before we get started, I really need you to hear this track. It's the title track off of his brand new CD from spring of last year. It's called What I Believe. You're going to love it. When I get back to where I was born When I get back to where I came from I'm going to make my way to when I was a child Where my mama and my daddy used to run wild Might not mean much to no one else Might as well keep it all to myself Give a thank to me, I'll be saying goodbye At ease to my soul A rock and a river and a mighty oak tree Make a solid foundation for what I believe Didn't cost a cent to have some fun Used to play out all day till the evening sun It may seem funny what I'm telling you All of these things and how I do Give a thank to me, I'll be saying goodbye at ease to my soul Mighty oak tree Make a solid foundation For what I believe I said a rock and a river And a mighty oak tree Get a solid foundation For what I believe Rock and a river And a mighty oak tree Get a solid foundation For what I believe this podcast is brought to you by Happening. Looking for something to do? Whether it's live music, dancing, theater, comedy, karaoke, trivia night, burlesque, interpretive dancing, you name it, you can find it on Happening.com. Visit H-A-P-N-Y-N.com to find out what's happening near you. Well, thank you for dialing in to the podcast today, Human Beings of San Diego County and Beyond. <laughs> because today we have Nathan James. What's happening, Nathan? Hey, it's good to be here. Good to have you. So tell us about that track, What I Believe. Well, that is, uh, like you said, is the title track off of my last record. And uh, it's a song that's just kind of a simple song, but it's about uh, where I grew up in a small country town of Fallbrook. And it's about uh, 
playing out in the out in the hills, out in the river, and growing up and having a good time. You know, just being a country boy, basically, <laughs> growing up in the country. You know, simple it's, things. It's some beautiful country up there. Yeah, yeah. It's an it's actual specific area that's, that I'm singing about in there is is along the Santa Margarita River out in Duluth out there. There's a couple little swimming holes. In my, it's kind of a cool tradition that like generation after generation would go and party out there, go swimming, you know, and you grow up, you know, and where it's free. You go down and swim down in the river. You don't have to pay to do that. And you just kind of do whatever you want hopefully people that don't trash the place but <laughs> is that still there <laughs> yeah yeah it's still open it's right on the border of fallbrook and camp pendleton basically oh, wow. and so my parents grew up going out there you know and then i grew up going out there and hanging around people go out there and shoot bb guns and go swimming in the swimming hole go fishing and hopefully not get in too much trouble did you go gigging frogs <laughs> that's I, I would go gigging crawdads actually i used to catch crawdads yeah. Tasty little critters. Oh, yeah, yeah. But what a pain in the butt. <laughs> it's a lot of work. To... It's a lot of work for that little <laughs> tiny bit of meat. You take all day. they are delicious. You take all day to catch enough for a meal. And then, then you got to let them sit for a while and eat and get the junk out of their systems. And... <laughs> <laughs> but I did do that once in a while. A couple times we'd catch them and eat them. So. Yum. <laughs> well, what I believe is a snappy little tune, and I know that who was it that played the harmonica on that track? That's my bandmate, uh, Troy Sando. Okay, and he's also on bass, correct? Yeah, he plays bass, but on that particular song, there's no bass. There's a tuba bass, Ooh. which kind of gave it a nice little twist. A friend of mine, a fantastic musician by the name of Trevor Mulvey, who plays around with a lot of different bands around town. He's a bass player, but he also plays tuba on the side, So, and Marty Dotson on drums on that, so... And uh, your Rhythm Scratchers, is that a, kind of a fluid band? Like These you days just kind it is. of uh, guys you've gigged with for years and kind of pick up whoever is available? Yeah, or? yeah, these days. And I honestly don't have a lot of band gigs, per se, locally, because I perform solo half the time and tour solo half the time. I tour sometimes with the band, but I've found ways to kind of pay the bills and play solo a lot, so I don't always have my band so I can't expect them to always have the same guys available. But Troy's available quite a bit. He's around town. And uh, Marty Dotson is on the road with Nikki Hill pretty much constantly now, and sometimes with the fabulous Thunderbirds. So I found uh, a young hotshot drummer in town named Blake Armstrong, who comes from the Miracosta Jazz School, who's a fantastic musician. Wow. And I have him on most of the gigs these days. So Very neat. Yeah. And uh, you said that Raphael plays organ and piano on a couple of these tracks yeah, on yeah. the record and uh rafael salmon yes <laughs> and james Harmon on well actually let's play a track that james is on yeah this is called in the news today it's another track off of nathan james album from 2017 called what i believe here it is <laughs> Thank you. 
is I can't jump this bed all the time. Never seen the world in so much trouble as today. What can I do? What can I say? So this track is uh, really got that jazzy solo in the middle of it. I just think that adds something very special and in the news today. So tell me a little bit about how today's news <laughs> made you kind of want to write this. Today's news has given me and everybody else the blues, I'm pretty sure. So <laughs> <laughs> I started off writing it as kind of my reflection of the political nonsense going on especially in 2017 when I came up with this. And then I realized it's so easy to just to show the obvious and even state names or whoever, but I started to look into it deeper as I was trying to come up with clever words for it and realized that it doesn't almost doesn't matter what political side you're on. It's all just about, like, we watch the news too much, and sometimes there's nothing you can do about it being a small person. <laughs> The best thing is to just not watch the news. And I started reading that it's a, actually a highly addictive thing, just especially when there's bad stuff happening all the time. Like you wake up in the morning and want to see, oh, what crazy thing happened today in the White House or in the, in the elections or whatever at the time. And uh, so I realized, man, you just got to not go crazy with that stuff or you, you're going to get depressed about it. That's kind of my take on it. I don't, I don't want to know what's in the news today is what I sing on that, so... And it kind of takes some twists and turns musically. It starts off as kind of like a Chicago blues with the James Harmon playing harmonica meets a New Orleans dirge, funeral dirge kind of beat that Marty Dotson played yep. on the drums. And then in the middle, he busts into like a, almost a gypsy jazz or uh, soul jazz organ solo part. It takes some nice twists and turns. And then it goes out as like a kind of a Latin thing. So it takes you on a little wild ride there. Now that's a brave thing to do, to like do all those different genres in one song and yeah. all those different feels. It could be like you're flipping the newspaper. There's page yeah, exactly. one, page two, page exactly. three. And it's always fun trying to pull that one off live with the different musicians that haven't played it before. Oh, wow. <laughs> if they don't listen to the song all the way through, you can always tell. If they don't know what's supposed to happen next, yeah. if they didn't do their homework. That's, that's a trick. You could catch him on that for sure. Yeah. So you mentioned a little bit about touring and that you do a solo thing. Do you do solo when you're on tour in Europe and you're going there very soon in Spain? And Yes, I do a little bit of everything and it's kind of fun. It keeps it exciting. I almost usually always fly out by myself for budget reasons a lot of times, but I've kind of learned to just go with that because I get a chance to play with many different musicians all over the world, and most of them are fantastic, and they're always excited to play with me and learn my songs. and So I do that a lot, but then the other part of the time is I'll actually perform solo out and about, and that's what I really like doing, because that's where I really can really focus on having a, something unique in a way. You know, If it's like a real listening kind of concert, like a house concert, or in Europe playing like in a cool old church or something, you know, and people really listen. So, um, yes, I just got back from the Netherlands. I did a tour over there with, uh, played with some fantastic Dutch musicians yeah, that they put together for me, this booking agent. And then also half the shows were solo. So I, that was a perfect example of getting to do a little bit of both. Cool. And I'm going to Spain in, uh, towards the end of November, just for one show, really. And that's going to be an acoustic show, which I don't get to do very often, where I just play in a resonator 
acoustic guitar with one of the great uh, acoustic musicians of, of all time, in my opinion, the Chino Swing Slide, who played a concert here at Thunderbird Analog yes, once. Yes, he did. So I got a show with him, some show that was big enough that they wanted to fly me out for. So That's fantastic. How fun. Yeah, yeah. And your wife is from Spain. Is yeah, she yeah. going to get to go with you? <laughs> no, not on this one, but I, it's funny. I'm playing like a few blocks away from where she grew up and where her parents live, but she won't get to go on this one. Oh, <laughs> bummer. I may even stay at their house, so we'll see. Oh, well, yeah, I think you should. <laughs> yeah. At least one day. Yeah. So we were talking about that's a, an acoustic guitar, but you're famous for these guitars that you make. Yeah. Out of washboards, and the first time I ever heard you perform, you were playing one at Thomas Yearsley's Benefit at oh, yeah. the uh, Royal Dive. Oh, yeah, way back then, that's right, yeah. Yeah, 2010, <laughs> and Candy came through this Benefit for him because he got hit by a train trying to yeah. save his dog. yeah. And she put out an invitation, you know, musicians, you should come support him. And I, so, of course, I did, and I loved all the musicians that <laughs> night. It was jam-packed with stars, and I have never seen anything like it. So <laughs> so he's got his guitar with him today in the booth, one of them. He says he's made multiple ones. This one has a whammy bar. Yeah, I brought the Strata washer. The Strata washer, <laughs> but he also has the Tritar. Which has three strings only. And an axe handle, yeah. And an axe handle. And then the one with lights, what do you call that? That's the, just the first one. That's the Washtar Gib board. <laughs> Washtar Gib board. Awesome. And it has lights. Yeah, you got to take it a step further, you know. Well, where did you get this wild ass idea? Well, uh, if, so, if anybody knows any of my backstory of things that I've done, I used to have a, a country blues duo that was kind of acoustic based we started out that way it was with me and ben hernandez who just recently moved back to town and we'd been starting to do a couple shows again together yay yeah yeah but uh he moved out of state when he got married and, and quit music for a while for about 10 years and so when he moved i kind of had was forced to reinvent myself a little bit in 2008 and that's when i started the rhythm scratchers actually and i was thinking how could i capitalize on the these things like he would play the wash tub bass he'd play the jug i stomped on a suitcase was like which i still use for my foot percussion now uh, what's in the suitcase it's just empty it's, it's basically mic'd up okay. hollow suitcase it sounds kind of like never a, tried that <laughs> yeah note you, to self stomp on a suitcase it's got to be a vintage one that's wood though like the real nice sturdy one so okay <laughs> But I, I was thinking uh, around that time period, like, what could I do to kind of take what I used to do but bring it to the next level? And uh, I was talking with Kevin Williams, a good friend of all of ours, down the street. True that. At uh, one of my gigs one night. And Kevin's always tinkering with things and always helps me out sometimes when I, when I don't have the right tool or something. I was talking to him and I said, I need to make a crazy looking guitar or something just to get people's attention. You know, like maybe out of a washboard or something. And then like a light went off in my head. Because me and him were talking and, like, brainstorming. And so uh, that night I went home and kind of planned it. Then the next day I went to an antique store and found a washboard and just kind of attached my fender neck to it with a 2 by 4 in the back, and that was the prototype. And then when I put it together and strung it up and I realized, oh, I didn't even think about playing the washboard, but it's right there. I wear finger picks when I finger pick, so I could just do that and the guitar at the same time. And then I, so I realized it would work. So I, I handmade a neck and... Did you laugh hysterically like Dr. Frankenstein? <laughs> like, were you like, yay! <laughs> pretty much. It's alive! Pr pretty, <laughs> pretty much. The first gig was down at the little coffee shop in Oceanside, the Nautical Bean. And uh, it was the prototype at the time. And so then I realized, oh, this works really well. So I'm going to spend some time on it and actually hand make the neck and everything, which I did. And... Uh, made it look kind of you know nice and then i realized they're really lightweight too so it's good for traveling so it was kind of a double win situation and uh there's a much more to the story of on them how i refined them but basically just kind of came together and so this is basically 10 years of <laughs> yeah. reinventing this <laughs> guitar over and over again and tweaking it and making it better and exactly making it prettier and cooler you should see the detail on this neck it's all <laughs> Pearly and beautiful up by the tuning 
What's the tuning part called? Yeah, that is actually flattened uh, washboard metal that I put on the headstock. Oh, my gosh. So it actually looked... That was James Harmon's idea, actually. Oh. <laughs> so That's it, really cute. It's just kind of fun, you know. Now I, now I play these so much when I play a regular guitar, they feel awkward to me because these things are a little different and, and I'm used to them, so... All right. Well, let's hear just a little something. <laughs> I can scratch and play at the same time. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, pl I tend to play the washboard more on my solo shows. That's where I can really yeah, go nuts on that, them. So. That's wonderful that you can <laughs> incorporate the rhythm with the guitar and, and your voice. And yeah, Do you why stomp not? on suitcase when you're touring around playing by yourself too? Yeah, if I have enough gigs that are solo, I'll bring it. Sometimes it, I have to really make sure it's worthwhile bringing it because it adds a lot of extra weight. To your luggage when you well actually now i i have a box i made instead of the vintage suitcases because the old suitcases would fall apart <clears throat> so i have a box but i have to put it inside of a modern suitcase right. to travel with and so it's not that heavy but it adds up quickly i try to travel as light as i can so i can appreciate that especially in an international airport <laughs> yeah yeah when you got to walk around a lot and sometimes i'm traveling on trains when i'm in europe by myself so I, I got to have everything I can carry by myself. Well, when you met James Harmon, how old were you? When I first met him, I was probably 17 or 18, actually. When Robbie Eason, a guitar player he had at the time, was playing with him before I joined the band. Someone else that grew up in Fallbrook. No way. So what is the deal with guitar players in Fallbrook? <laughs> How come everybody is awesome from Fallbrook? <laughs> it's all about that Deleuze, you know, hanging out down at the Santa Margarita River. I don't know. Um, it's amazing. Like you find Anthony to do. Collins. Yeah, yeah, the Fallbrook kid. Yeah. The Fallbrook kid. <laughs> and you and... I call Robbie Eason the original Fallbrook kid in terms of blues guitar right. players. Because <laughs> he was before both of us. So... so <laughs> Like, put it in perspective for me. How old is he? <laughs> Robbie is 42. Okay. I'm 40. So he was two years ahead of me. Okay. And he, Did you go to school together? Yeah. I, my first year in high school, my freshman year, I walked into a music class. We had a guitar class, actually. And there was Robbie Eason and Joey Jazuski, the bass player that uh, took Thomas's position for a little while in the Paladins. Right. Who grew up in Fallbrook, too. Joey and Robbie were like best friends. And they were playing in high school. And uh, I saw them and was kind of knocked out by hearing them because they were already playing out at nightclubs at that point. They started really young. And, like Robbie quit high school his junior year to tour with James Harmon. And Joey was already playing out with bands, you know, full time at that time. Wait. So I wanted to be like them. <laughs> so did you finish high school? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mom wouldn't let me quit. So I had to finish high school just barely. And then uh, Robbie kind of put in a word for... From me, I hardly knew Robbie, but I hung out with him a little bit. But he put in the word to James Harmon to, to, to watch me as being like the next guy coming up. So James called me when I was 19 to start playing with him. That must have been quite an eye-opening experience. <laughs> yeah, it was a good. It was a great opportunity to get to travel instead of having to figure out what to do with my life or in terms of job or college. I got to go right out on the road right out of high school. So. Well, it's obviously your passion. I mean, you yeah. know, it's not like you were born to do anything else. Yeah, I wouldn't know. I couldn't even work at McDonald's if I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Okay, I have. And Burger King. I don't recommend it. So all of this great music that you've created yourself, you also have your own studio, and you have your own record label, <laughs> Sacred Cat Recordings, and we can find... Nathan James music on vinyl, on CD, digitally. You can go to his website. It is nathandjames.com. Yeah. That's N-A-T-H-A-N 
D. Don't forget the D. J A M E S dot com. Well, you can see him around San Diego for sure. He's been at some of the greatest festivals like the San Diego Blues Festival. Mm -hmm. He has produced events at the Brooks Theater in Oceanside. I think you've played at every major club in San Diego. Except the Casbah. I've never played the Casbah. What? we got to get you in the Casbah. <laughs> I know, I know. I've always, it's funny. I've never, I've been there once or twice, but I've never even played there either. So. <laughs> well, you know, they have this back room yeah, called yeah, the Atari yeah. Lounge. And I love playing the Atari Lounge. Oh, cool. So if there's a good blues like lineup, you should talk to Tim and say, uh, "Can I play the breaks in the, in the Atari Lounge?" Because a one man band like would be oh, perfect yeah, yeah. for that small space. That's good to know. Bring your own PA. That's my <laughs> advice. But that's a lot of fun. Yeah, you got to get in in the Casbah for sure. So this last track we're going to play off this record is the star of the cover of the the record. Yeah. It's a bonsai sequoia that you discovered. Yeah. And photographed. Is that your photograph? Yeah, I think, or Paula, my wife's photo. I can't even remember who took it. I might have. She took the back photo that I'm standing in front of the tree. Oh, obviously, so. I guess. <laughs> that'd be a hell of a selfie stick. Um, <laughs> because that bonsai is not so bonsai. No, it's no. It's ginormous. Yeah, it's probably, they estimate it's like a 3,000-year-old tree. That's It's not one that's in the, like, the popular areas where they have uh, signs in front of the trees, or there's you don't even know how to get to this one, so you got to kind of do some back research on it. So that's one of my other passions is just nature, I guess. So. Well, it's a beautiful tree and a beautiful cover. <laughs> I thought, why not put that on the cover of an album? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so this next track is an instrumental called Bonsai Sequoia. It, it features actually uh, the layering of all my different washboard guitars. It's a side note. Nice segue. (laughs) We just heard the washboard guitars, and here they are, all three of them featured on Bonsai Sequoia.
Well, thank you so much. I love that song. That is very groovy. <laughs> And that is also featuring James Harmon on yeah, harmonica yeah. too, right? Yeah, it's kind of a song that was just put together of a little jam session I had with a, a drummer, just him and I. I started off playing my baritone washboard guitar that's kind of like a bass. Uh huh. So literally it was just like a 20-minute jam that I consolidated to five minutes or less and then took little themes over the same, basically the same beat, the same drum groove. It varies a little bit, but... Uh, and then I went and redid the guitar parts, but used the the one drum part and edited it together. It was kind of fun doing that. And it has it's kind of like all these different twists and turns of surfy to like ragtime to whatever you call it. And James Harmon, I just had him play some random licks and threw them in here or there later on. So with the powers of the computer. The powers of mixing. <laughs> I want you over there. <laughs> you over there. Exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you for being the Frankenstein of <laughs> guitars and mixing and songwriting and uh, the son of Fallbrook, <laughs> where blues is apparently something you drink with your breakfast. <laughs> And uh, I'm glad that you are here back at the Thunderbird Analog Recording Studio. And uh, I look forward to seeing you live again. Yeah, well, it's an honor to be here, be considered for this. So thanks for having me. Well, you are what's happening, Nathan James. <laughs> so we had to have you on. Well, it's great. It's close by, too. I live down the street from you guys. So. I know. <laughs> you can roll home. We're neighbors. Excellent. Well, this is What's Happening in San Diego. I'm Laura Jane, your hostess. Tune in next Sunday for another thrilling episode in which Doris gets her oats. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>